think when it comes to uh, Dr. Bronkley, we talk about the triple threat where we say a great teacher, a great clinician, and a great researcher, and there's no question, she was the best in all three. She came from Peru and was the first female chief resident here at Ohio State, uh, was asked to join the faculty of a very small number of, of hematologists. Really, the beginning of hematology was here at Ohio State. Well, I think she was considered a real pioneer because, I mean, she was sort of the person who put hairy cell leukemia on the map as a specific disease. Hairy cell leukemia was described in the 50s by Dr. Bronkley, and the reason it was called a hairy cell leukemia because the cells under the microscope showed little hairy projections, and she wrote all the major articles on that. And then, really, an amazing event happened in my career, and actually Dr. Bronke's career. In 1981, uh, we were working on experimental drug therapy, and we found a new drug that turned out was amazingly effective. So we developed a partnership with Dr. Michael Griever, myself, and Dr. Bronkley to study and treat these patients. And Dr. Bronkley was instrumental in me staying in academic medicine, actually becoming a professor of medicine. So I owe a lot to her. Well, she was here not only before there was a James, she was here before there was a comprehensive cancer center uh, focusing on hematology and then in particular leukemia. And certainly her work and her discovery were very, very important in inspiring future leaders to think about the Ohio State University as being a focus, a focal point for cancer research. What's going on now, the explosion of the human genome, the ability to synthesize drugs, the prevention strategies, and all the hope that our patients are filled with now, that's very, very inspirational to the young students. So if we can get the funding and keep this all going, I am certain we'll live in a cancer-free world in our lifetime. The other thing that was unique about Dr. Bronkley is that she was such a great teacher that she won every teaching award that you can think of almost every year. In fact, I didn't even go to the ceremonies to think I would get it because it was almost a fait accompli that she would be the teacher of the year. I remember one time when you know she's you know, talking about, we see this cell, it's a plasma cell underneath the microscope, and she's asking a medical student, what's that cell? And the medical student says, a blast. You insult that cell! And, 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 and you'd think like, oh my gosh, you know, you're like kind of like, like a little intimidating. And then she would say, now I know you know that cell. Now, let me help you. The father was a pro-lymphocyte, the mother was a lymphocyte. Plasma cell, right, you got it. See, I knew you knew that cell. When I first came here, even though she was retired in 1997, she was actively teaching. She was terrific. I mean, the students, I mean, absolutely loved her uh, at all levels of education. Very few people ever graduate from Ohio State University without being able to define a hairy cell. She was the ultimate team player. And talk about work ethic. You know, nowadays we get fatigued when we spend about two weeks consecutively on the wards taking care of patients. Do you know that in her day, Dr. Bronkley at one time spent 12 consecutive months on the wards? You want to talk about work ethic and passion. That's amazing. So when it comes to somebody who truly has care and compassion, there is no falseness with her. It was genuine. And I think that is what really, really counts. An endowed professorship, an endowed chair um, at the university, first of all, and perhaps most importantly, is an extremely prestigious honor. Thank you to every member of the Broncoli family. And I know that everyone was aligned with this decision to create the Broncoli chair, which will support that professor's research. And of course, the chair will go in perpetuity. So it'll always be uh, inhabited, if you will, by a leukemia physician or a leukemia scientist, someone working in a team at Ohio State University on the passion, which was really ignited first by Dr. Bertha Broncoli. The legacy that Dr. Broncoli has left 
and continues is the commitment to be a physician, the belief that it is a calling, that you are constantly working throughout your career to be a better doctor, a better human being. Well, Dr. Brunkley's legacy, I think, uh, would be best described as teaching physicians the importance of research and how research can be applied to improve uh, the outcome for patients. I was diagnosed back in 1987 with hairy cell leukemia. And the, and the oncologist that uh, made the diagnosis said, uh, go home and begin to prepare. <laughs> meaning obviously that you had a timeline on your extended life. So when we found that this drug penistatin was able to achieve a complete remission in 75 to 85% of the patients, you know, we were in a position to really expand on that rapidly because we were here at Ohio State and she had a large patient population who needed treatment. This program wouldn't have happened if Dr. Bronkley hadn't been at Ohio State you know, not many people get an opportunity to cure a disease. The fact that a single type of cancer could be cured to the optimistic, passionate scientist means that any cancer could be cured. And it really changed uh, my entire career. I think because of her help, we were able to change the outlook for patients uh, with this form of leukemia. I mean, we have people who are 25 years out with a disease that had three to five years survival. One third of my life has been a bonus. I've been able to see kids' weddings, graduations, grandkids. <laughs> How can you explain that? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bronkley, to you and your team for this wonderful, unbelievable, incredible gift. <laughs>